Another great band here at Inferno Festival is Norway's own Kampfar, which means it's actually from Norwegian uh, mythology. Mm-hmm. It's a battle cry for Odin or... That's right. Oh, for it's, Odin. I got it. Yeah. That's pretty good. It's one, it's one of Odin's many names, and this, this is sort of the war name, you know, the battle name. Can you tell the viewers who you are? Well, uh, I am, I'm Ole. I'm uh, the guitarist in, uh, in Kampfar. Uh, I've been a guitar player since 2011, and um, yeah, this is this is the third time that Comfort play at the Inferno Festival, but it's also the third time that I play at the Inferno Festival. And the kickoff party or the actual festival? Uh, no, I played here with uh, Mistur in 2010 on the Rockefeller stage, uh, and then we played uh, last year on the club venue night. Uh, we'd come forward to just open the, the festival, and this, this year we're playing the Ro- Rockefeller stage again. So. That's pretty good. So you guys are with Indie Recordings, which is definitely one of the best labels in Norway's Indie Recordings. Do you think that's actually been instrumental in the career of um, Kampfa? Well, let's put it this way. We, we used to be on uh, Napalm Records, which, which is a, a big European label. Uh, and it has its pros and cons, you know. Um, internationally, then maybe you get more um, presence from, from a label like that. But the fun thing about coming back to Norway is that, first of all, we get more promotion, more punch in Norway. Uh, in the recordings, is a very nice label to be on because they are super professional. They are very tight to where we are. You can talk to them on a daily basis. You can, well, speak the same language in many ways, mm-hmm. you know, uh, which is great. And we love to be on indie recordings. And uh, so far, it's been, yeah, absolutely fantastic. So you're currently touring on Jevil Macht, which means um, Devil's Power mm-hmm. in Norwegian. And what's that been like? And do you intend on coming out with a new album soon? This is just three years now. Yeah, well, um, we have our plans, but we can't really come forward with the plans yet. <laughs> it's a bit of a yeah, thing, but definitely we're, we're always looking towards the future, you know. Uh, we're really happy with what we did on Jevil Macht, and we still don't feel finished with that in the sense that we still want to go out and show the Evelmacht to people even though we're also of course making a live show that is based on on the older stuff as well but there's there's sort of a theme you know going on and uh, we're not quite finished with that yet but we have our plans we're working working hard towards new goals and uh, we're definitely not going to rest uh, we're going to keep pushing yeah why do you think this album took long to do this album took long to do for several reasons. First of all, there was a change of personnel, of course. Uh, Thomas, who had been in the band since the beginning, uh, left. Uh, he was also very influential when it came to songwriting, of course. Uh, then I came in. It takes a bit of time to settle in a band, but uh, it was actually a very s- smooth transition. Um, but you have to find your place, you know? You have to play around with IDs and, and all that kind of stuff, and you have to discuss... We, we actually spent a lot of time just talking about how the album would be, you know? How it would feel, how it would sort of smell, how the <laughs> atmosphere of the album would be before we had even written any concrete music. So that took a lot, a lot of time, and then we actually took a whole year off with no live playing. We only played Hellfest that whole year just to write the album and just to be... because. We are very conscious that when you release something, it has to have some kind of meaning. You know, we're not the kind of band who will release something just to have an excuse to go on the road again. And uh, that was very important for us. And um, well, we were really happy with uh, with what we did, what we released, and uh, it seems that people are also, you know, happy about it. Excited. Yeah. So, would you say your sound is very? Um, it's done black metal the Norwegian way. <laughs> Well, it's difficult to say. I don't think Comfort has been seen as a very typical black metal, Norwegian black metal band per se, but I think that has something to do with the perception that people have of black metal, you know? Uh, black metal is a feeling, black metal is a core thing that, that all of us have deeply within ourselves, and maybe our sound has turned even more black metal as the years have gone by. Um, so, I mean, Comfort right now is definitely what I would call a Norwegian black metal band. Absolutely. Uh, it doesn't sound like Dark Throne or Bursum. No, it doesn't. But it's still, um, it still has that core value, I think. 
Yeah, that's the grittiness, I yeah, guess, the yeah. grittiness of it. Um, the new product that you have out, the new album, uh, Jebel Macht, mm -hmm. it seems kind of refined in many ways because I listened to some of your older stuff before. It's refined but yet gritty. Did, it, did you guys have a hard time coming to an agreement with the way it should sound? <clears throat> well, um, the, the Mara album that was released in 2011 was the first album that was uh, recorded in Sweden at, in the Abbey Studios with, with Peter oh. Tektigan. Yes. So when, when uh, I wasn't in the band at that time, but when they re recorded Mara, that there was this idea that you want to have uh, something that sounds current, something that sounds fresh, something that sounds powerful, but still has that uh, sort of edge to it that you don't want to miss. You don't want to polish everything into being this smooth jam, right? So we had the same idea when we went into the studio this time, that we wanted to have a lot of power. We wanted it to be... We wanted it to sound 2014, but in an old-school way, you know? And I guess it's up to the audience to decide if we succeeded in that or not, but we only know that when we work with Peter in, in Abyss, um, he really listens uh, and Jonas, who's his technician as well, uh, and they understand what we're doing, and that's great, you know, to cooperate with good professional people who understand what you're doing. Now, speaking of live shows, you played in the Barge from Hell cruise. Yeah. What was that like? I've never been on one of those because I just think if you're stuck on one of those cruises, if you don't want to see someone, you can't exactly throw them off the boat, and you can't, you don't <laughs> want to jump off either. <laughs> Well, let me, let me tell you, I thought I would never be on a cruise ship <laughs> like in, uh, in the Caribbean ever in my life. And I can tell you that uh, if it wasn't for the fact that there were 40 metal bands playing there and I was playing in one of them, I would probably never go back to a cruise ship again, you know? What's that like? I mean, it's, it's such a weird blend. You know, it's, there's something completely off about playing on a cruise ship in the Bahamas, you know, with ocean all around you. We played one of the gigs on the pool stage, you know, with people bathing in a pool. It was the middle of the night. It's one of those moments, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of those moments where when you're like, you stop for a second when you're on stage and you think this, I never expected this when I started playing like in yeah. my garage, you know, with the, with, whatever. Um, but it's one of those experiences that you, you really just have to take with you, you know? It's something to, to look back on. And uh, also, it's, it's, it's just fun to see that we can do what we do wherever, you know? Because people really enjoyed what we did, even if we were sort of out of our elements. And uh, hey, that's, that's the best thing, best thing you can do. You played at night time, right? Yeah, we did. So you like didn't you didn't get <laughs> It was crazy. It was like the day after we were at Bahamas, like 3, 3 a.m. or something, up on the pool stage. Yeah, it's, it was weird. You should have been there. <laughs> mm, I don't know. Like I said, I want to go on one of those, but I just have one of those mixed feelings. Because don't get me wrong, I love metal heads. I love metal. But seriously, some people, I just want to keep running into them. Yeah. The last time that happened, just for the record, I almost threw someone off a boat. So I don't yeah. think it's a smart idea. Well, let me tell you this, that if I were to choose uh, one festival to go to, uh, I wouldn't choose like the 70K or the Barge to Hell for yeah. an experience. I would choose something like... Um, Let's Yeah, or, or Hellfest maybe okay. even, or, um, or Brutal Assault, which is a great festival in, in Czech Republic. Oh. Yeah, yeah. In, uh, in a medieval castle there, it's, it's, it's oh. really nice. Yeah. Or Inferno Festival. Inferno Festival is also very cool. And, uh, yeah, it's also something that is very close to my heart because I've been here many times as a spectator and now for the third time as, as an artist. So, yeah, it's a cornerstone of Norwegian uh, extreme metal. Can we say that? Yeah. We could totally say yeah, that. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I could see you guys playing at something about Bloodsuck. Bloodsuck is like my only other favorite festival, and Adam and Vicky are some of the nicest people you can meet. Did you ever have the experience of playing Bloodstock? No, no, we haven't. And actually, we're still waiting for the invitation from there because the UK has been a little bit difficult for us, but every time we go to London and play there, it's great. So. What are you playing? Camden at the Black Hearts? Uh, yeah, the Underworld, actually. Yeah. Mm. I just saw Hyrax there. Ah. It was a really good show. So, do you plan on releasing any tracks in English? Um, <clears throat> no, we have we have had a few English uh, lyrics before on uh, on some of the songs. Like mm -hmm. on the previous album, we had uh, especially like the the encore song, uh, "Our Hounds, Our Legion." Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's always 
you know, we don't plan ahead to see, we, we don't decide, okay, we're going to do this many songs in Norwegian, this many in English. Maybe we do a whole album in English, or maybe we do a whole album in Norwegian. It's something that, you know, it comes naturally, uh, especially for, like, talk the vocalist. Um, when he starts working with the lyrics, some songs just work with Norwegian and some don't. It's, it's that simple. What do you do besides play metal? Well, I personally work in IT, you know, I'm uh, <laughs> a com- yeah, 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 it's the, the 9 to 5 uh, stuff, you know, <laughs> which, uh, which keeps everything going. Um, so yeah, it's like having two jobs, being in a band. But I guess they're pretty, like, are they impressed by what you do? Do they get curious about it? Because black metal obviously comes with limitations. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine all the, the, the people in their 40s and 50s who used to have a band when they were 18 years old and all the jealousy that comes from that when you talk about it at lunch? Of course. <laughs> oh, there are many. And that was probably, like, a lot more cool than it was back then. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the older you get and the more years you have behind you and the more stuff that you do, people sort of start respecting you in, in a different way. But there's a different dynamic when it comes to parents, of course. Then you have to be in the local newspaper or else you haven't done anything. So that's that's the deal there. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> have you been on the local newspaper? Yeah, I, I did. For what? Well, I used to play in, uh, I had my own band called The Answer, and when I released the fourth album on, like, international labels, uh, finally the local newspaper picked up on it. And then my parents were impressed. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, what's a typical Sunday for you? I'm afraid to ask, but i got to ask anyway. Typical Sunday for me? Uh, I don't know if I have a typical Sunday, you know. Um, but I enjoy my spare time. I like to do interesting things. Uh, I like to create music. Or I like to do something else that is inspiring. Um, it could be something that I see, something I read, something that I learn. Whatever it is, it has to be, yeah, you know, ins- inspirational in a way. And when do you say fans can expect a new album? Because now you're still doing Devil Map. Devil Map, so. Yeah, I, I really can't say anything about the you next know, album. Know, what it, you know, Another year, another two weeks, two months, two days, like ten years. Let's say, let, let's, let, let's say it's, it's not going to be quite as long as it was between Mara and Djevelmacht. It's going to be shorter than that. So it's not going to be a three-year span. So it'll be like at the end of this year or something. <laughs> That's your conclusion from it. Oh my God. You guys act like you're doing a, a top secret, like how to build a fucking bomb or something like that. Do you know how to build a bomb? Um, I could try. <laughs> I have this mission we could go. I have a few missions, I you think. You can learn everything on YouTube, can't you? I don't know if they'll show how to, like, I don't know if they have that on there. <laughs> but I do know someone who knows how to build them. Yeah, well, let's say we're, just, we're working really hard, and it won't be as long as uh, maybe it, it's been in the past, you know. Cool. I'm sure people are going to look forward to it. I hope so, yeah. definitely. Mm-hmm. Now, I wanted, what's your favorite tea? You look like a tea drinker. <laughs> you know, I'm actually a coffee drinker, really? but uh, I like the kind of, uh, not the kind of mint tea that you get in cheap tea bags, but the kind of sort of high-end mint tea that you can, which the only downside is it's really, really expensive, but when it's good, it's really good. I like that. So a few years, not too long ago, I know that you guys had a tea party on stage. The only reason I asked you about the tea is because I wanted to know if you're going to have a tea party on stage tonight and if I can be invited uh-huh. to. I'll bring you your favorite tea. <laughs> well, you, you probably know about these end of tour uh, sort of jokes that we have playing around all, all over the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks serious. <laughs> well, this is not an end of the tour, so maybe not today. But we had a really fun time with, with Hate and East Cold, uh, which is also an indie band from Norway yeah. and we were playing this last show of the, of the tour and there were hardly any people there it was like a big big venue it was a Sunday it was the middle of nowhere everything was just horrible about the whole thing you know the promoter hadn't promoted it. yeah you know the whole deal so uh, you know what's better to do when you have a Polish extreme metal band like ripping it seriously and to bring a table, bring some tea, bring some whiskey. We had whiskey there as as well. Uh, I did the serving, um, and yeah. 
Now, you told me you played in another band before, but I think that you failed to tell our viewers about the other band that you're thinking of forming called Morbid Anglers, a takeoff of Morbid Angel. Are you embarrassed of that? Like, do you have a problem with Morbid Angel? You know, actually, I, w I think the picture you're referring to, I wasn't in that picture, if you're talking about the, the picture from the East Cal guys. I don't know <laughs> but I know that Ask and PJ, uh, they're, when, when we're done with Kampfa, they're, they're going to do something Morbid Angel-esque, you know, because they're like going gaga for that band. <laughs> I think you guys should just stick to tea parties for now. That's more fun. So make sure you pick up Jevil Mak on Indie Recordings. Oh, yeah. Yes. And would you have an official website for the band? Well, we have comfort.com. Um, that is the official website. Uh, we also have a, a Facebook. It's easy to find. Uh, just search for it. It's Comfort Official. All the news is there. The web shop is there. Uh, also make sure to support Norwegian Rat. Uh, Norwegian clothing manufacturer who we are supporting and they're also uh, working with bands like Enslaved and Ein Harjar and uh, yeah they're a really yeah they're a really cool brand Norwegian rat so is that what you call a snitch in Norway like a Norwegian rat like uh, not really not in the same way no it doesn't work in the same way <laughs> destructive and found worldwide well yeah do they have a stand here uh, I believe they do. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, maybe maybe I'm lying right now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, check them out. They're really cool. And do you have any messages for your beautiful, beautiful fans out there? I think all metalheads are hot, by the way. You guys are the hottest people in the world. Metalheads are hotter than people that like pop stars. Metalheads are hotter than pop stars, country stars, and anything out there. So just deal with it. Yeah. Do you have any messages? Well, assuming it, when you're watching this right now, you would probably want to go to the Inferno Festival. So if you're thinking about doing that, just do it. Like next year, uh, book a flight, go over here. Norway is, is cold and it's expensive, but the Inferno Festival is totally worth it. This is a cornerstone of Norwegian extreme metal and it's the real deal. Yeah. Yeah, and make sure to visit them on the web and click like to on their Facebook page to support them. Thank you very much.